If you're looking for a few little tips and tricks on how to grow chilies, if you're new to chilies or uh, somebody that's just trying to uh, expand their knowledge base, this is the video for you. First things first, get the right seeds, okay? Um, if you're looking to grow hot peppers, they're going to take longer. Milder peppers take less time to grow and ripen, okay? Now, getting seeds from the right source is absolutely crucial. Find someone that actually uh, has good fleeced plants, etc. There are plenty of places in the UK where you can get good seeds. We've got a couple of packets here. And what we're going to be doing is just checking the seeds before we do anything with them, just to make sure that there's no dark spots or discoloration on the, on the actual seeds themselves. This can be a sign of disease. Anything like that, get shot of it and then you'll hopefully have a reasonable success rate with germination with the remaining seeds. Once we've uh, done that, then we're going to actually look at uh, treating the seeds before we put them into soil. So we've got our seeds, they're in the packet. First thing we're going to do, we're going to soak them in weak tea. So make a cup of tea for yourself. Once you're done with the tea, keep the tea bag, make another cup of tea, let it cool down a bit, okay? We're going to pop it straight in. So we've got our tea here that we've let to cool. We're actually going to pop our seeds straight in like this. You can just push them under the surface a little bit if you want to. And what that's going to do is that's going to help soften the casing. It's called chemical scarification. We're effectively mimicking the digestive system of a bird in a very human way. Um, you can, if you want, you can actually lightly brush them with sandpaper just to kind of uh, reduce the, the outer shell of the seed. Or if you're very careful, you can use a knife as well just to make a, a scarring. But be very, very careful if you're going to do that not to cut into the seed itself. So we favour the, the tea soaking method 24 hours before you're going to put into the soil um, and that will help again with the germination. So our seeds have been soaking for 24 hours. We really want to be popping them into some soil now. Peat free soil every time, okay? Now there's a couple of options. It depends on what you want to go for. We quite like jiffy pellets. Jiffy pellets come, uh, they're dehydrated soil and the little pellets uh, like so and you can put one seed per pellet. Simply you can hydrate them with warm water. Uh, you can use a fairly generous amount of water as well and what will happen is over time these will start to take on the water and they will expand quite nicely into something that's maybe uh, an inch to, to two inches in, in height and then you can pop your seeds in there. If you don't want to go down the road of jiffy pellets then a simple tray, make sure you've got holes in the bottom, bottom for drainage. This is just a little plastic container from our, our local Chinese takeaway and uh, make sure you label if you're using different seeds label your seeds pop them in a row you want to put them maybe about an inch or so apart and about five to ten millimeters under the soil and cover them uh, this is a really great way for if, if you don't have if you've got some soil already or if you don't want to be buying jiffy pellets this is a nice simple simple technique so once we've put our seeds into here which we'll show you in a second we'll then move on to how we look after them our jiffy pellets have now expanded brilliantly. So they're around about uh, an inch, an inch and a half high. Some jiffy pellets come with a little hole um, automatically, otherwise you can just make a little indentation around about five to 10 mil deep. Our favorite way of getting the seeds out of the tea, not all of them come to the surface by the way, so you may need to uh, pop them in a, in a sieve. But um, if you just chase it round, it comes out very quickly, sticks to the, the, the uh, plant marker, which we quite like. Then all you need to do is just pop it in. Just, just sort of encourage it down to the bottom a little bit. And then we're going to be covering it in over, sorry, with, uh, with the soil. Um, you may note that I've not touched the jiffy pellets uh, with my hands. Uh, it's, it's good practice really um, for any bacteria, etc that are on the hands. If you're a smoker, nicotine is very, very bad uh, for seeds. So if you can protect your hands, all the better. Key thing now is we need to keep this compost nice and warm. Um, it, it needs to stay moist as well, uh, but not waterlogged. Waterlogged, you're going to damage the seed, it can be prone to rot, but we do need to keep it warm. So we're going to pop it in our Vitapod. This is a heated propagator uh, that we've set. So in it goes. Just remember to make sure you've got your, your marker here. And then we're going to pop the um, other tray in that we've made as well. So in it goes. Now the Vitapod is, is a great little device. We'll pop the lid back on. You can 
create ventilation quite nicely with this. It does come with a temperature control, so you can set it to whatever you want. We favor around about 28 degrees, 30 degrees. Um, don't want to go too much less than about 25, so 28 is good. Obviously, the higher the temperature, the more water you're going to need. Um, so you're going to need to keep looking after it a bit more and more. What we're going to do, we're going to come back um, hopefully within about a week or two, and we may have a few chilies to show you. Success. So we're about uh, 10 days on and our little babies are starting to show, which is fantastic. They've uh, had a nice warm bath in the Vitapod and uh, they are looking quite healthy, which is fantastic. At this point, you want to start thinking about light, um, really keep them inside, keep them in the Vitapods or whatever it is you're using to keep them warm. Uh, but they're going to want light now. This is going to really help them uh, uh, grow on. So there are plenty of specialists available. Uh, think of the blue-white spectrum, really, or even ultraviolet to a degree, that's going to help the chilies do a little bit of research. But this is it. I mean, this is really as simple as it gets when it comes to planting chilies and, uh, and growing them. If you have any questions, it's really straightforward with us. We don't know everything, um, but we will always answer questions. So pop comments um, below and we'll, we'll do our best to, to answer your questions. You can also get hold of us on cliftonchiliclub.com. There's a contact form there as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope this is of use to you. Enjoy your growing.